and the child that you killed. You didn't only kill my child, you killed your own. Welcome to Young Black Lives Honored. Be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you never miss another video. Also, give this video a thumbs up and leave a respectful comment below. In St. Petersburg, Florida, around 2.33 a.m. on July 25, 2012, 17-year-old Morgan Kiana Martin, suited in her pajamas and fuzzy slippers, told her older sister not to lock the front door as she was going outside to see 24-year-old Jacoby Flowers and she would be right back. Due in January 2013, the teen was four months pregnant at the time and had told her mother that she wanted to show Jacoby, the man she claimed to be the father of her unborn child, a sonogram picture. She insisted that she would come back inside after a few minutes. Martin had chosen the name Jalea Raquel for her baby girl. Unfortunately, Morgan never went back inside and her family has never seen or heard from her again. Her purse and sonogram picture were both found on the porch of her home located at 2808 17th Avenue South while her cell phone disappeared with her. She was last seen sitting in an armchair just outside the front door of her home. One witness saw a white car parked in the house's driveway but did not see Morgan approach the vehicle. The teen was known as a usual user of social media. However, all activity on her accounts stopped after her disappearance. She also had a job at Checkers and left behind her paycheck. When questioned by authorities, Jacoby, who appeared cooperative with law enforcement at the time, denied any involvement in Morgan's disappearance. He claimed that he and Morgan were merely acquaintances while he denied fathering her child and even sleeping with her at all. Additionally, the man denied speaking with or seeing Martin on July 24th or 25th, 2012 and said that he could not recollect ever having sex with the 17-year-old. He actually went as far as saying that he hadn't seen her for months prior to her disappearance. An investigation did not turn up enough evidence to charge Jacoby with anything and Morgan's case went cold. Despite this, Morgan's family and friends firmly believed that Jacoby was responsible for her disappearance. A search of the man's Lexus revealed that the trunk mat was missing and the trunk was free of dirt, leaves, or bits of debris, according to detectives. Flowers stated that he had bought the car without a trunk mat. However, a previous police investigation involving the man in 2012 yielded pictures of the Lexus, police say. In those photos, a trunk mat was visible. Police also spoke to the car's previous owner, who said that he saw the car with the trunk mat. Detectives then interviewed Holly, who told investigators that she got off work at midnight on July 24th and when she arrived home, Flowers was there. She claimed she sent Flowers to McDonald's to get food and he did so and did not go out again that night. Police reviewed tape from McDonald's drive through and neither Flowers nor his Lexus ever appeared on tape during that time frame. In a third interview, Flowers changed his story and said that he went to a nightclub and did not return until 3.30 a.m. Tampa Bay Online interviewed Morgan's mother, Leah, on her daughter's due date, January 4, 2013. Leah told the website she would have loved to get a hospital call and she would have given her life to have somebody say something. The mother also explained that the night her daughter vanished, she told her to just stay in the house and leave him alone 
but Morgan just wanted to tell him she was having a girl. The article also mentioned that Morgan had an older brother. About a year after her disappearance, police reclassified her case from missing persons to a case of homicide and Flowers remained a person of interest. In March 2015, St. Petersburg PD formed a cold case unit and Morgan's case was one of the first to be revived. Veteran Detective Jim Culberson was assigned as the lead investigator and he was assisted by Detective Amanda Newton. Investigators spent the following year re-examining previously collected evidence, re-interviewing witnesses, collecting new evidence, analyzing data, and also sought the assistance of other law enforcement experts as well as experts from other specialized fields. The detectives requested 21 subpoenas, 9 search warrants, and 10 court orders as part of the investigation and traveled extensively throughout Florida and Alabama to follow leads. Eventually, there was a major break in the case. In July 2015, Jacoby was interviewed by ABC Action News. He mentioned that Morgan had previously run away. Family shared that Morgan ran away once when she was 15 and she went to a friend's house where she called a relative and she was back home within a day. Morgan was known to speak to her mother several times per day. When police had come out in this investigation, they had said in the story that they gave the media was that she had stepped out of the house to tell you that she was four months pregnant with your child, a baby girl. Is that I have, I have no idea on that information. That's just been a story that was made that night and it's just built up from there. Like, so you didn't, you had no, no idea she was pregnant? No sexual relation. So it's, I mean, like I said, this is just somebody I know from around the way. And my name just got put in it and it's been there. It was like, oh, this, this dude drives a white car. He has a white Lexus. It's like, you know how many people in the world got a white car? You know what I mean? So one person say, okay, I seen this person leave with him in a white car and it just ran with it from there. Why would her family and police say that you were the father of her child? I have no idea. I don't know if that was something that she could have said. I mean, she's obviously younger than me. I mean, this isn't, you know, women lie about certain things all the time for diff many different reasons. I don't know. I'm not really. And what do you think about police putting it out there saying she had gone, the story that according to them, she had gone out to tell you that she was pregnant and had, with a baby, had named the baby girl and that you were the last person to ever see her. No one ever saw her again. You were the last guy. You're asking how I feel about it? Yeah. I, f I feel like it's ridiculous. I mean, I feel like they can't, you know, nobody can prove this. Like, there's no eyewitnesses. Like, you know, anybody can make up a story. That doesn't necessarily make it true. Like, if I just said, hey, this is the last person that, that I've seen this person, doesn't necessarily make it true. And have you been fully cooperative with police? Fully cooperative. Like, I've came to the station every time they've asked me to come. Like, I've never skipped town. I've never not talk to them when they needed to talk to me, you know, to a certain degree. I've been fully cooperative. Like from, from the get-go, they've even, they've even said, like on the, on the first newscast, this person has been totally cooperative with him, right? They went from, right now we're not looking at him as a suspect to, oh, he's our prime guy now, to it being in a cold case. It's like, this thing is all over the place. So you just knew her from like in the area, but you had like no relationship with her? That's correct. Like just being around, just, just knowing her. I mean, you know, she's a pretty known person. I mean, as far as, you know, certain areas like her, her work at Checkers and stuff like that. When was the last time you saw this girl then? It, it had been some months before that. Before this incident happened, it had been some months before. And, you know, obviously what police are suggesting now is that you have had a hand in her disappearance. Correct. I'm not sure where they're building the story from, but it's like, it's like they basically building a story. Nobody can say, hey, I can prove that he did this, or hey, I can prove this, or da da da. It's just like they, they're trying to get somebody to be at the end of this story. Where were you the night that they're saying that you were out in that driveway? I worked this night. Um, I went to a nightclub this night. I was home this night. And how have they treated you when you've gone in there and you've been telling them, I'm not the guy you're looking for. I don't know what happened here. I mean, one point it was like they basically, hey, we need, you know, we need answers. We just want to find this girl, da da da. da. Um, another time it was, hey, we know you have something to do with this, da da da. da. 
It's basically just playing like, you know, at one point it was it's badgering, some, at one point it wasn't. Like I say, they really haven't bothered me like in years. Like I don't really know why this is coming back up like so big like it is. I'm guessing because a certain guy like who handles cold cases, he picks cold cases up and it's like now he's starting to crap again. Do you wonder yourself what happened to her? I do, I do. I wonder all the time. I can't really come up with anything. I mean, I know that they had on record that she had ran away previously, like in her, you know, so I don't know when or how many times or whatever. So I don't know if it's a situation that this is what it is or like she's just run away again or I have no idea like what to think, you know, I don't. So where do you go from here in your life now? The same place I've been, I mean, continue to live. I mean, I, I continue to live my everyday life. I mean, I'm not doing anything different or out of the ordinary. All right, so I want to be absolutely 100% clear. This is absolutely, she was not pregnant with your child. Not at all. You never had sex with Morgan Martin? Not at all, never. You did not see her the night that she disappeared? Not at all. Do you have any knowledge of where she is, what happened to her, where she's been or could be for the last three years? None at all. What is your message to the family who's also pointed the finger at you? I mean, I feel like they shouldn't really point the finger at me as the way that they're doing. Because like I say, from day one, I've, I've you know, done, none, done nothing but cooperate with them. Like, I mean, the, ne the very next day after this, the mother called me. It was like, hey, you know, you're looking for my daughter. Have you seen her? I'm like, no, I haven't seen her. Okay, she's like, okay, I got to send the cops out to you. Okay, send them. I have nothing to hide. You can come to my house. You can look around. You can talk to my roommates, my neighbors. I have nothing to hide. You know what I mean? I don't, I feel like, Yes, you know what I'm saying, that the family wants to find her, the mother wants to find her daughter, I understand all of that, but that does not mean try to ruin my life at, in, this, in the same time that you're, you know, this is going on. And I understand, I mean, you have a reason for talking to me today, one of being which you want to clear your name. I do, I do. I mean, it's like, it's, you know, it's ridiculous. Like, I've gone from just being known as, you know, a normal guy, you know, who works for a living and, you know, do things the right way to this monster. And I said, I, I don't think that's fair at all. Like, nobody has anything against me. Like, this case is cold. You know, it's like, how long does this last? On June 23rd, 2016, St. Petersburg Police Chief Anthony Holloway announced that Jacoby Flowers had been indicted on first-degree murder charges in Morgan's case. Holloway said that Flowers had planned Morgan's murder and disposed of her body. She wasn't his to take. But most of all, I want to thank everybody for helping us get to this point. I know we have a long road. Jacoby was already in custody, serving a sentence due to unrelated charges of fleeing and eluding a law enforcement officer at the time, but was due to be released on July 1st. By then, Investigators had poked numerous holes in Jacoby's alibi for the night of Morgan's disappearance. Though he was willing to talk to law enforcement four years earlier, following the indictment, he refused to talk to detectives. After the conclusion of his sentence, he was transferred to Pinellas County Jail to face the murder charge. The 33-page capital felony murder indictment against Flowers, then 28, was unsealed a few days later on July 1, 2016. According to the documents, Jacoby had lied to investigators about Morgan being just an acquaintance. Evidence from Jacoby's text messages revealed that he acknowledged having sexual relations with Morgan on numerous occasions. He allegedly begged Morgan not to go through with the pregnancy as he was already supporting three children and did not want to support another one. Facebook messages between the two revealed that Morgan told Jacoby that if he did not pay child support, she would report him for having sex with a minor. Investigators had a solid motive for Jacoby to kill Morgan as not only did he not want to support another child, he also did not want to get charged with statutory rape. Flowers went to Morgan's home at 12.33 a.m. on July 25, 2012, and her phone was then turned off at that time. Investigators revealed 
that cell phone tower data showed that Flowers then traveled to his home located at 7053rd Avenue North and stayed in the area until 1.20 a.m. At around 1.38 a.m., Flowers traveled to his place of employment, Kentucky Fried Chicken, at 7103 Seminole Boulevard, where he was the closing shift manager and did not set the alarm after clocking out earlier that night. He entered the establishment using an employee door which was not monitored by surveillance cameras. Detectives indicated that Flowers then set a fire within the KFC cooler that stored chicken. He then tried to conceal it by washing the floor down but left behind a substance that has not been identified. At 3.32 a.m., Jacoby left KFC and drove to an area in South Street, Petersburg where Kwanzaa Smith, the mother of two of his children, lived at the time. He left there at approximately 3.49 a.m. and went back to the KFC location. Once more, Flowers left the KFC location at 4.39 a.m., placed a phone call to Smith, and spoke to her for more than two minutes. Smith later told investigators that the only reason she would speak to Flowers would be to loan him a car or money. Detectives said that less than an hour later, cell phone tower analysis placed Flowers in Pasco County at I-75 and State Road 54, at approximately 5.23 a.m. before his cell phone was turned off. Almost three hours later, Flowers turned his cell phone back on, which showed he was traveling southbound on I-75 near Brandon at 8.27 a.m. About 20 minutes later, surveillance footage from the Sunshine Skyway toll boots showed Flowers driving northbound towards St. Petersburg. Investigators shared that at 10.49 a.m., the number to Flowers' phone was requested to be changed. They noted that the man and his girlfriend, Ricky Holloway, who had shared a child together, both had access to the account. Flowers continued to deny knowledge of Morgan's whereabouts or even having spoken to her leading up to her disappearance. Police said text messages between the two in the weeks leading up to the murder painted a very different picture. Flowers pleaded with Morgan to quote, not do this to me. And because she was a minor, not to broadcast that he was the father because he quote, don't need them problems. At some point, Flowers told investigators that online messages between him and Martin discussing a pregnancy were only quote, playing make-believe. A high school classmate of Morgan's told detectives that Jacoby offered her money to beat up the 17-year-old about two months before she disappeared. She also said that Flowers knew she was pregnant at the time. Detectives believed the motive for the murder was because Flowers was angry about Martin's pregnancy, the effect it would have on his relationship with his girlfriend Ricky Holly, his finances, possible criminal liabilities, and the stress it was causing overall. According to cell phone records, Flowers and Holly were not in the same vicinity during the time of Martin's disappearance. Phone records reportedly show Holly made eight phone calls to Flowers that went unanswered between 1.28 a.m. and 8.29 a.m. on July 25th. Police said, a friend of Holly's also came forward alleging that the woman confided to them that Flowers asked her to lie about his whereabouts at the time that Martin went missing. Ten minutes after calling Martin, Flowers texted Holly at 9.13 p.m. stating, quote, small issue, gotta get the girls for like an hour. Sorry, short notice. In August 2018, St. Petersburg PD said a substantial tip had led them to search a pond at 71st Street North and 52nd Avenue North in Kennett City. The pond, which was located just a few feet from Flower's former home, was drained and the area was searched with canines and metal detectors. Police crime scene tape was seen in the backyard of the home. At the time, 
a neighbor who did not want her identity known but had spoken to police said she thought she saw Jacoby attempting to destroy evidence. She claimed that around the time Morgan went missing, neighbors saw a lot of strange things happening. After years of delays, on March 31st, 2022, now 34-year-old Jacoby Flowers, who had long maintained his innocence, pleaded guilty to second-degree murder as a part of a plea agreement. At that time, he promised to help authorities recover Morgan's body in exchange for the lighter sentence. As a part of the plea deal, he was eligible for a shorter prison sentence of 25 years as opposed to 40 years if Morgan's remains were found before his sentencing. He then spoke with investigators in Alabama over a video chat and pointed them toward a specific location in Pike County over 450 miles away from the teen's home where she was last seen. Investigators used ground penetrating radar to search and also brought in a backhoe to dig more than four feet deep during a week long search that came up empty. Up to the week of his sentencing, a judge signed an order allowing detectives to take Flowers to Alabama to assist investigators who attempted to search once more, unfortunately, to no avail. St. Petersburg Police, David Gerardo, said that police exhausted all options searching for the body in Alabama, but would resume a search if any new information emerged. I mean, these people are coming out in the heat and the rain, the storms, and they're looking for my child that they wouldn't know her, you know, from Adam, you know, I mean, they didn't know her. And they're like, well, that's our job. That's beside the point. On April 28, 2022, emotions ran high from Martin and Flowers' family during court. The judge at times warned family members in attendance to maintain order or risk being thrown out. Jacoby Flowers was sentenced to 40 years in a Florida state prison by a judge in Pinellas Pasco Circuit Court. The man apologized for his actions during his sentencing. I'd like to say that I truly and sincerely apologize to you all. When I say you all, I mean specifically Miss Leah, Sierra, and also Miss. I want you all to know that I am a human being. I am not a monster, despite what you may think, he said. There's not a day that goes by in the last 10 years that I haven't felt the deepest level of regret. Though he said that he was sorry for his actions, Martin's mother said that she did not believe him, nor does she forgive him. As of the recording of this video, Morgan Martin's body has not been found. I want you to know that she was really a good person. <laughs> and I really hope that every bit of you dies inside. I hope Satan sucks your whole soul out. And your family, I hope there is nothing ever good comes to you, ever. And I hope that every day that you sleep, you have to see her. Do you understand me? I hope you see her face. And the child that you killed. You didn't only kill my child, you killed your own. I'm uh, Leah Martin. I'm Morgan's mom. Um, I'm a, I also would have been Julia's grandmother in 2013. Um, I brought this poem. It's from Missing Children's Page. It said, I've lost my child. I hear myself say, and the person I'm talking to just runs away. Now, why did I tell them? I don't understand. It wasn't for sympathy or to get them to helping hand. I just want them to know I've lost something dear. I want them to know my child was here. My child left something behind, which no one can see. So if I've upset you, I'm sorry as can be. You've had to forgive me. I could not resist. I just wanted you to know that my child did exist. She was mine. She wasn't his. 
to take. But most of all, I want to thank everybody for helping us get to this point. I know we have a long road and there's a lot more to do, but I really, really can't even start to say thank you to everybody. The missing and exploited children never gave up on us. The St. Pete Police Department have never, ever quit calling. They did never not answer a phone call. If I just couldn't make it, they came to me. Um, when Detective Culverson and Amanda took over the case, they came to the house and they never quit coming. They never quit calling. And all these wonderful people to help my Morgan. And they didn't even know her. But most of all, I just want to tell everybody, there's so many kids out there that everybody's forgotten about. And I just want to thank everybody here for not forgetting about my Morgan and for waking up every day with us and helping us. So I think that's about it for me. Yeah. May the family and friends of Morgan Kiana Martin and her unborn baby girl find solace in the happy memories and may her soul rest in perpetual peace. I do hope that one day they can receive closure and give her a proper burial. Thank you.